Located within 10 degrees of latitude to the north of the equator, Jaffna district lies at the southernmost region of the island Sri Lanka. It is in close proximity to the subcontinent of India and separated from it by the Park Strait and the Bay of Bengal. The Jaffna Peninsula is actually almost an island, if not for the narrow causeway known as the Elephant Pass, which is said to have elephants wading across the shallow lagoon back in the days. Being one of the oldest habitation sites in Lower South Asia, populated by Tamil-speaking people, who call this unique area Yalpanam, meaning the city of music, Jaffna lies today covered by shallow lagoons, and interesting islands dotted offshore and battered by the three-decade-long civil war, expecting a new revival. The term Yalpanam was coined after the stringed musical instrument Yal and the expert musician Panam. The land area of Jaffna was said to have been bestowed to Panam by the king in appreciation of his talent and service rendered to the palace as a musician. Word of mouth altered Yal Panam to Yapanam. Interestingly, in Tamil, sounds of Y and J and P and F are interchangeable. Yapanam became Jaffnam, which evolved into the contemporary term Jaffna. Historical precedence of Jaffna dates back to the arrival of Arya Chakravarti in 1215 to 1619 CE. The era was marked as a golden period for Tamil literature and resulted in an offspring of many Hindu temples. Hinduism was the main religion practiced and which strongly influenced the settlement pattern in the region. Traditional dwellings were gathered around the religious centers and were very strongly controlled by the religious beliefs of the community and the climatic conditions. Form and patterns of the built environment reflect the socio-cultural and economic standards of the community. The historic buildings and structures built in the city center belong to different eras of Portuguese, Dutch, British and post-colonial periods, which prove the existence of rich architectural and cross-cultural traditions in Jaffna. Jaffna Fort is the second largest existing fort in the island. Fort has been constructed to conduct military and administrative functions. It was originally built by the Portuguese and rebuilt and expanded by the Dutch to facilitate the trading activities during the second half of the 17th and 18th centuries. In 1795, Fort was taken over by the British and was subjected to several changes. Up till the 1970s, the fort and its buildings were in their original state. As a result of the civil war, most parts of the fort has been destroyed. Today, this has become a major attraction for the visitors, as well as the city dwellers, used as a place for leisure and recreation. Though this place has enormous potential for development, it is often left out in the integrated development plans proposed for the rest of the town. The harsh climatic conditions of the region made Jaffna people both industrious and thrifty. The climate did create its symbolic Palmara vegetation and bred the skilled Jaffna farmer and moulded his lifestyle. 
Historically, the social organization of people of the Jaffna Kingdom was based on a caste system dominated by the agricultural and landed elite. Similar to the caste structure of South India, caste system and the religious practices have a close link to the Hindu religion. The clustering of the dwellings followed the caste hierarchy, which was the principal characteristic in the rural settlements in the Jaffna Peninsula. To the outsider who comes to Jaffna, the most obvious indications of Hinduism are the numerous kovils, large and small. Caste system has led to the establishment of such kovils of varying size and complexities. During the period of the Jaffna Kingdom, Saivism enjoyed all the privileges as the state religion. During the British occupation, Catholic religion was introduced and a number of church buildings in Jaffna city seen at present were built during the British rule. British introduced the grid pattern for the streets and the railway transportation connecting with the other parts of the country. The railway functions were completely stopped during the conflict periods and today the former railway station, which has an interesting mixture of architectural styles, both colonial and Tamil, is completely abundant. Among other religious groups, Hindu festivals are significant and reflect the uniqueness of their culture. Thus, during festival seasons, the entire community and the street changes, taking a much grander ceremonial appearance. Hindu people mostly worship Shiva, Murugan, Pillar, Kanaki and Kali out of which the most accepted lord is Shiva. The religious behavior of the Hindus consists of ornate festivals such as Navaratri, Deepavali, Sivaratri and Thaipongal. Thaipongal is celebrated at harvest time, traditionally intended to thank the sun god and livestock that helped create the material abundance. The day after Thai Pongal is the Madhu Pongal, which is the ceremony of worshipping the cattle. The cow is worshipped as they consider it as their mother. The lifestyle of the Jaffna people is strongly influenced by religion and culture. The cultural and religious influence is seen in almost all the aspects of day-to-day -day life. Food culture is one such aspect where some communities are fervent vegetarians while others regularly consume both red and white meat. In the bygone days, food was often served on a banana leaf on the floor and today there are some eating places where the food is still served on the leaf which is regarded as both clean and disposable. Wives and others who prepare food in Jaffna use almost no preserved food. Everything is freshly made and the staple food of the Tamil people is rice and curry. The attire of both men and women demarcates distinctive differences from the other parts of the country. The men usually wear a veti or sarong which is a versatile dress in work and general purposes, while women wear saris and lungis. The colour white is not popular in clothing. They prefer various shades and colours instead. The marriage is an important happening in the Tamil tradition, and there are four kinds of marriage arrangements. Traditional, cross-cousin, intermarriage and love marriage. According to the traditional kind, the parents make the arrangements from the very beginning for two young people who are usually unacquainted with each other. 
Marriage ceremonies involve much preparation and customs such as horoscopes, gold melting for jewellery, wedding saris and more. Traditionally, the wife is considered inferior and in most cases, divorce seems impossible for the wife to consider for economic reasons. Recreation, in an urban sense, is not a part of their lives. The traditional Javna people find it recreating to sit on the house veranda and think, or perhaps merely sit. He does not require anything to amuse himself other than to visit his relatives and friends. However, the youth prefer cinema, radio and TV as recreational mediums. Many come to the city centre for various recreational activities and to do shopping. Some people go to taverns, whereas drinking toddy is considered a popular recreation. When domestic architecture is concerned, Traditionally, the house is not just a structure, rather an institution created for a complex set of purposes. Frequently, the traditional Jaffna house has an atrium or central or rear court open to the sky and used for drying purposes in all seasons, including drying clothes and food items. Some houses are open and airy, with numerous doorways with windows and grills positioned to bring in as much as breeze as possible. Many houses have a granary room for the storage of grain, especially paddy. The houses are whitewashed or color washed, while carved doors and ornamental wooden trim along the roof edge is distinctive. The public road is treated as an extension of one's veranda or a substitute for it. The home compounds are full of trees of flower and fruit which add both shade and beauty. The boundary walls are an interesting feature in Jaffna as they are constructed with a variety of materials including palmyra leaves Kajang and live trees. After the independence, Tamil politicians came forward and led their society. During that period, they identified that their cultural values were lost due to the foreign influencers. Decorative surface applications, elements borrowed from later South Indian styles, were phenomenal in buildings such as the public library and municipal market. They needed remedial action to protect their values and cultural identity together with the nationalistic sentiment. The memorial towers, entrance gates and clock towers built several decades ago represent the presence of their old architectural elements which make the city people psychologically more comfortable with this kind of iconography. Many of the buildings along the south side of Hospital Street are interestingly built during colonial period yet with a Tamil architectural flavour. The former town centre, which was originally formed along the Candy Road, has been shifted towards the hospital street, acquiring this area for defence activities during the conflict periods. 
Because of this, much of the old buildings and places of the original town centre today have been abandoned. With the recent exposure of Jaffna after the civil war, rapid changes are taking place both socially and culturally. The business community in Colombo is seeking new ground in Jaffna as they have seen a huge potential for business growth in the area. The resulting dimensions are becoming phenomenal in the city itself by means of infrastructure development. At the moment, there are several banks and corporate brands already functioning. The irony or the risk is that these new developments are happening in such a way that does not relate or respond to the existing uniqueness of the city. The advances of communication, information technology, and media are happening at a rapid phase that will not only influence the cultural picture but also the lifestyle patterns. This sort of development is inevitable and the youth are easily subjected towards these new occurrences which may result in socio-cultural changes that needs to be thought about ethically apart from the marketing and business goals. The potential of Jaffna to develop as a unique city with its own identity is high. However, if the development is not monitored and provided with guidelines, Jaffna will also end up as a flavorless contemporary city of concrete and glass, which is happening drastically in many other townships of Sri Lanka. The inherent architectural language owing to the cultural discipline and lifestyle of the Tamil people has to be preserved in the development agenda rather than creating a contemporary ISO with the massive digitally printed advertising panels that overpower the city's architectural identity. In this context, with the rapid urban transformation in Jaffna city today, the urban design can seemingly play a greater role in shaping the city's social, cultural, physical and economic status. Yet, the current and the upcoming developments in the city centre seem neither architecturally conforming to its unique built forms, nor the true reflection of its people. Urban design can offer the physical design direction to urban growth, conservation and change, while it provides tools for working with the tangibles of landscape, built form, land use and infrastructure, while catering for intangible aspects such as sense of place, social and cultural dimensions of the people. It will be a prime responsibility of all related development agencies and public authorities to ensure that the developments occur in a guided manner with an input of urban design. Jaffna was the centre of arts, culture and economy for several centuries. Unlike other cities in the country, Jaffna being isolated from the rest of the world for more than three decades during the conflict period, has been able to maintain and retain much of its continuing traditions, keeping with its identity. Any further delay of being able to respond to their tangible and intangible bearings in current physical development activities of the city would certainly hamper the hopes of retaining the glamour of this fascinating city, the distinctiveness of its people, their pride and joy in the future. Will Jaffna continue to be the city of music forever?